So in this video, I wanted to give a quick introduction to the Process Analyzer, which is a nice tool that comes with Arena that helps to automate the running of multiple scenarios that are basically different types of parameter settings that you might have across different models and then doing comparisons and even getting a basic idea of how those, uh, what are the kind of best choices of those parameter values across your different scenarios. So uh, this is the process analyzer, which in Arena can be accessed under the tool menu process analyzer. Now I am going to bring up as an example, I'm going to go to file and uh, browse examples. And so just in case you have never noticed this before, under the file there's browse examples and browse smarts. And under browse smarts there's a bunch of these tiny examples that you might be able to use just to show you how to do something simple like um, how do I, uh, if I go to basic concepts, then how do I, uh, uh, you know, here's some general modeling tips, here's parallel processing of entities, here's routing entities uh, with constraint or with connections. So there's all of these, um, you know, basic little things. And so there might be um, you know, batching, you know, how do I batch and separate, you know, so if I open up these things and I find models which are relatively simple, but they give you, they teach you the, the, the basics of how to do these little things in Arena. Now, if I go to browse examples, then I can find fully functional examples. And so I'm going to pull up the airport security example extension 2. And, uh, and so there, here it is here, and let me make sure that that batching example and get rid of it so it's not in the background. And so in this uh, airport example, then it's showing passengers arrive, their IDs get checked, uh, some are going to pass security, their ID will be passed and others will not. Those that pass security uh, spend time at an x-ray machine and that has a resource there that's used up for that. Uh, then there's this counter thing that we're going to play with a little bit here. Um, and uh, this counter uh, basically just takes a counter and it increments it by one. And then it asks, does the counter equal 15? And if it does not, then those people are cleared. And if it does, the counter gets resets to zero and they get an additional security check. And then you uh, keep track of how long these people waited when they went through this. And so uh, there's, and then they get cleared here. So this sim is basically simulating the random checking of people. And so you might say, well, how, why is 15 a good number there? How might things change if this was a different number? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to save this because this is a canned example. I'm going to save it in another spot. So I'll just create a folder. Uh, that you know, my process analyzer folder and I'm going to save it uh, out uh, there so that I can make some modifications here. So the first modification I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and I want to play with this 15 here. So rather than making it 15, I'm going to create a variable. So I'll go into my basic process and then I go to variable and I'm going to create a new variable that I will call max counter. And I then will initialize that variable to say 15, just to make it just like it currently is. So then I can go into this and I can say, now instead of 15 here, do max counter. And um, instead of being exactly equal, I'm just going to, as a safety check, say greater than or equal to, just in case something weird happens. And uh, so the, the big change here is I change the max counter and then I'll just change this 15 in the description to say max counter so that I can see the full you know, amount of changes here. So if I were to run this thing, it should still run like it normally does. So um, passengers arrive and most of them get routed this way. Some of them eventually get routed this way and so on. Great. Now, if I wanted to see what the effect on, say, the total time in the system is for an entity, I could manually change this max counter uh, variable um, in the uh, variables panel here and rerun this simulation over and over and over again for different values and then manually check all of those. 
What I'd like to do instead is go into a Tools Process Analyzer. And under here, I can say I want to create a new uh, Process Analyzer uh, uh, case here. And uh, I'm just going to, it'll complain if I don't save it. So I'm going to save it as something. I'll call this Airport Project 1. And then I go over and it says Scenarios. And I can double click to create a new scenario. And so I'll just call it Scenario 1 for now. And it says Program File. So here I need to find the .p file that corresponds to this simulation file. So um, if you ever create your DOE files, you have to run them once, and then Arena will create a .p file that has a bunch of other information in it that it, the process analyzer will use. So you have to run your file once to turn the DOE file into a .p file a process analyzer can use. So I've already done that. I did that a little bit ago. So I can load this .p file up, and, uh, and that will load up this scenario. And it doesn't look like much right now, and so what I am going to do is right click on uh, it, uh, right click on the table here, and I'm going to say insert control. And I can do things like I can say, well, the number of reps, I might want to uh, change that in the scenario, or it's right now set to one. And then I might insert a control, and then this is where, this is the actual thing that I'm interested in. So I'm going to go into user specified, and there's where my max counter showed up. And so I can insert that and it should say 15 because that's what its initial value is. So then I can also then add responses. And so under response, I could go up to say entity and I might look at the total time. And if I look down here under response selection, um, I can see that total time is a tally, which means that if I run if 100 entities get moved through that replication, then each one of them is going to have a total time, and that will be stored in a list. And so every replication is going to output 100 of these total times. And what it's going to do is take the average of those. Now, um, I could change that and say, well, what about the max or what about the min? And uh, and so um, I'll you know leave it as average, but I could you know change those things as well. And so this is going to turn that tally into a single number per replication. And so right now it's blank because I haven't run any of these. Now what I'm going to do then is um, I've got this scenario here. So if I go up and under um, I think it's under edit, I can say duplicate scenarios. And if I actually have you know, multiple uh, highlighted, I can actually duplicate the multiple. So now I've got four scenarios, and now I can go and change things. So I can say, what if my counter uh, is equal to one? What if it is equal to two? What is if it's equal to 10? What if it is equal to 20? And oh, what the heck, um, why don't I just also uh, add one more duplicate and say 30? 50. What the heck? 50. All right. And then under replications, um, let's just say that um, uh, I want to run at least five replications, maybe 10 replications of each of these. Now, maybe I should have done this originally when this before I duplicated this scenario, because now I need to go down through and change these all to 10. So I'm just going to do that. All right, so what this is going to do is that when I hit play, which I'll do while um, I'm uh, talking here, I'm going to actually highlight all of these scenarios. They all happen to have the same name, so I could clean this up and make them different names. So if I hit play, oh, here's all the ones that are highlighted, it says I'm going to run all of your scenarios. And I'm going to click OK. And if I look carefully here, I can see in this reps column, I can watch it walking through the 10 replications I asked for. Once it's done with these 10, it'll move on to these 10 and so on. And when it gets done with this first scenario, then my response variables, and I could have had multiple response variables, will get filled in. And, um, and so it's going to keep going down through here. And I now will, it, it's basically automating the process of me running all of this and it's doing all this for me and it can even then generate a chart of all of these data and it can even 
sort them statistically in a statistically rigorous way for me to be able to see which scenario, or in this case, which value of max counter, leads to the lowest entity total time average. And I can kind of already see here that when the max counter is equal to one, then the average total time is high, and it looks like when the max counter is gonna be equal to something higher, then this total time gets lower. But, um, but here I see that the, the returns kind of fall off. And that kind of makes sense to me, is that if the max counter is equal to 50, and I very rarely ever hit that, then there's hardly anybody who's going to be flagged for extra you know, screening. And it's not going to matter if the max counter is 50 or 500, because it just hardly ever gets hit. But when the max counter is 1 or 2, then it gets hit all the time. And so you know, let's see what these look like, maybe with the box and whiskers charts. All right, so I am going to go over to my uh, responses here in my table here. I'm going to highlight all of these. So I'd be interested in seeing what these total times are going to look like. And so I'll go up to insert and I will select chart. And I've highlighted these and I would like to see a box and whisker chart of each one of these. And so basically what it's going to do is I've run 10 replications, so it has 10 numbers for scenario one, 10 for scenario uh, two, or max counter equal to two, 10 for max counter equal to 10, and so on. And so you could generate a box and whiskers plot for each one of these scenario rows and then put them next to each other, and that's what I'd like. So I'm gonna compare the average values of a response, entity total time, across scenarios. So I'll hit next. And I want to see uh, total time. So if I had multiple response variables, uh, they would show up here. And in some of the chart types, you can plot mul multiple response variables simultaneously. You can't with a box and whiskers plot. And then across these scenarios, and I could do 1 5, I'm just going to do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then the labels, I could make my labels scenario name or I could make them max counter. And this kind of ends up showing you kind of like in a one-way ANOVA where, uh, or one-factor ANOVA where I've got this factor um, max counter and it's got factor levels 1, 2, 10, uh, 20, and 50, then I've got the levels that will be across the x-axis and then the box uh, and whisker charts on top of that. So I can click next there um, and I could adjust the uh, title and y-axis and, um, and x-axis, which would be a good idea to do. Um, and then I can also then go and say identify best scenarios and then I it can say well what's a best scenario we'll say well uh, total time I think smaller is better so I'll select that um, so uh, that's the idea here and it's telling me in this little box that well for these data four and five are the best scenarios. I, in other words, it's not gonna be able to tell the difference between four and five, but it knows that four and five are better than all the others. So let's see what that looks like in this chart. Now, it generated this thing and it's really hard to see because it's so tiny, so I'm going to stretch it out here. And with the particular scaling, so let's see if I can make this um, a little bit bigger. So uh, with the particular y-axis scaling, it is difficult to see the difference between these, but what this red color down here means is that it is used, uh, basically it's done what we refer to as an ANOVA with a post hoc test. And so the ANOVA has said that your factor matters that uh, max counter matters, it makes a difference. There is a noticeable difference in total time when you change uh, the, go from one level of max counter to the others. And then it is applied a post hoc test, like a Tukey test or Fisher's LSD. And that post hoc test tells us, it effectively sorts these different factor levels out. So it can tell us uh, which one is better than the others. And um, you know, there's, Behind the scenes, I actually don't know what the process analyzer is doing. That's one way it could have done it. It could have also done pairwise t-tests in all of these different combinations with Bonferroni correction, but that ends up getting pretty ugly. That's why I think behind the scenes, it's just done in ANOVA with a post hoc test. And what that post hoc uh, does is it says that these two levels, 20 and 50, 
it cannot tell a difference between them. Statistically speaking, their confidence intervals are too close together that it cannot differentiate. But it can tell you that this grouping is much better, in other words, much lower than all of the rest. So this tells me that if these are the only levels I care about, these are the optimums here. And so uh, I don't have enough data to tell the difference between 20 and 50, but our intuition tells us that 50 is probably better than 20. So if all we cared about was reducing the, the average total time of a uh, customer uh, moving through an airport, then of course we don't flag anybody for extra screening. That's all this is telling us. But uh, if we had something that was a little more complicated, a little more uh, less counter or a little more counterintuitive, less obvious, then this could uh, work really well because it not only plots the data for us, which is kind of similar to what we'd see just in this table, but it actually does a statistical test behind the scenes. So we can say with rigor that these levels are better than these levels. And that's just uh, a little hint of what the process analyzer can do for you. I've kind of shown you that there are other charts uh, that you can generate, that you can generate uh, additional responses. So I can say insert response. I could have picked uh, something else out of here. So, um, you know, I, I was, I mean, here's another one, cycle time for selected passengers. So here I put that up here and it looks like there's hardly any difference here. And that makes sense because uh, all we've basically ch changed is how many were selected, but the cycle time for selected uh, uh, passengers is going to be the same. So I could put you know, extra responses in here. I could put um, extra um, uh, control variables in here, and I could edit those control variables. Note that whenever you change one of these things, like if I change this 20 to a 25, it's going to warn me that uh, at the instant you change it, you're going to lose all these data. So uh, you'll have to rerun at least that scenario, and that's all it's warning me here. And so if it took you a really long time to run all these scenarios, then maybe you don't want to go and, and bump the controls and lose all that data. And, uh, and then I think there's even ways that you can get data back out of here. So um, I think, um, and this might be, uh, I don't use this enough, but I'm pretty sure that somewhere in here, maybe it's through, if I right click on a chart, um, if I were to say copy data, um, I actually don't have no idea what, uh, you know, where it puts that data, but you might be able to paste that out and do an Excel spreadsheet or so on. So I, I would sort of invite you to play around with that. But in the meanwhile, if you just need uh, to uh, automate running a bunch of simulations across a bunch of different scenarios, kind of like behavior space in that logo, then definitely check out the process analyzer. If you want to get even fancier, then go in and check out OptQuest, where you don't even have to specify all of these levels. You just give it a range, and then OptQuest will walk through that range and then find the best one out of that range. But that's a, a topic for another video. For now, I hope uh, that this little tutorial of, of the Process Analyzer has been helpful.